Today, I am very excited to be giving you an in-depth look at probably one of my favorite coffee products to have come out in the past two years, the Niche Zero Grinder. In this video, we'll go through what exactly makes this grinder so unique compared to the other offerings in the same price bracket, and then of course we'll grind some coffee and see how well it performs. The Niche Zero was first introduced to the world through an Indiegogo campaign launched back in 2017. It was called the Niche Zero because in addition to wanting to solve several workflow and performance issues they had identified with existing coffee grinders, its primary aim was to have zero or minimal retained grinds from shot to shot. This in and of itself is a big benefit to workflow that we'll get into later on in the video. First, however, let's take a look at the form factor and features of this particular grinder. When you first unpack your Niche Zero, you'll install the circular wooden grind tray and then extend only as much power cord as you need from a clever storage system. Three other items are included in the box. A user's manual, a nice wooden grinds brush, and what has become the somewhat iconic 58mm niche dosing cup. Now, looks are always subjective, but personally, I really, really like the appearance of this grinder. The look is contemporary, but manages to do so while straying away from the boring boxy form factor of most other grinders, and for that matter, most espresso machines. Sitting this unit next to a big chrome heat exchanger is a nice bit of design contrast, and I especially like it in the black colour I got for that reason. The wood accents further soften the look, and I think that if you're someone who has retrofitted wood accents onto your espresso machine, this will be a very sharp looking combo. Looks aside, the build quality follows suit by being very high quality. When I first received the unit, I was pleasantly surprised by how heavy and sturdy the cast aluminum body felt. This thing is not going to be moving around on your countertop, thanks to the weight and the four non-slip rubber feet hidden again behind wooden finishes. Under the top flip-up lid is a single funnel which can hold around 55 grams of beans at a time. This may seem like a lot if you're considering this purely for espresso use, but it is just about the minimum workable capacity for other brewing methods such as drip or large batch Chemex. Just something to note. Being fed by the loading funnel are a set of 63mm conical burrs. Niche opted to use a tried and true set of Mauser burrs. In fact, they have been lifted directly out of the commercial Mauser Kony grinder, which at the time of filming costs almost three times as much as the Niche. Nice. Having these large 63mm burrs allows them to spin more slowly, which not only reduces noise levels, but also lowers the temperature introduced into the coffee when grinding. Smaller, faster spinning grinders can actually risk burning the coffee with the heat they generate. For comparison, here are the burr sizes for some other popular grinders you may be considering. No, burr size isn't everything but it's pretty universally agreed upon that in the world of coffee grinders, bigger is better. On top of these burrs is a recent addition to the Niche, which is something they've named the Niche Flow Control Disc. Early versions of the Zero were known to suffer from quite severe popcorning of beans, which has a negative impact on the grind consistency. This new disc manages the flow of the beans and also stops them from jumping around once they have entered the grinding burrs. It's nice to see a company that is willing to listen to the feedback from early customers and very quickly make adjustments to the product. Grind size adjustment is of course stepless and is operated by turning the entire funnel assembly, with a subtle chrome dot indicating where exactly you are on the coarseness scale. I find that based on how fine the adjustment resolution is with this grinder, the indicators around the outside are actually very well spaced. I've seen some people saying that they wish there were more tick marks around the outside, but from my experience, you need to move at least half a step to see a noticeable change to a shot of espresso. So as long as you are exactly on one of the markings, or exactly in between, repeatedly hitting the same grind setting shouldn't be an issue. This fine level of adjustment makes dialing in very, very accurate. One thing that Niche is adamant about is that this is the only coffee grinder you need for all of your home coffee needs. For this reason, the grind size range easily covers all the way from espresso fine to French press coarse. However, a common gripe that I do agree with is that the dial markings stop before the end of the adjustment range. If you want to repeatedly grind out at the limits, you're going to have to add your own markings. Being a single dosing machine, 
Controls are about as minimal as they come. A switch on the right side of the machine will start the grinding as long as the top lid is fully closed, which engages a safety interlock. I've seen some people even operate the grinder by simply leaving it switched on and then using the lid to start and stop. Another small gripe I have with this machine is that the small orange power indicator light on the right hand side stays continuously lit no matter whether you are grinding or not. Why? Alright, I think that's enough talk about the physical machine, let's actually grind and make some coffee with this thing. Let's start by testing the grinder's namesake, it's zero retention. The website claims that this grinder has a consistent retention within plus or minus 0.2 grams. So we'll quickly load up 18 grams and see how we do. Okay, so that's pretty darn impressive, but now you may be asking, how repeatable is that? Well, I ran a couple more shots, and needless to say, I got a little bit bored. So, we've seen that the grinder can, in fact, grind repeatedly with extremely low retention, as the name implies. But how exactly does that help you at home? Having a low retention grinder helps in three key situations. In day-to-day -day coffee making, you do not need to purge out any old stale grinds before making your daily coffee. This saves both time and money. And you can also trust that if you put 18 grams in, you'll get 18 grams in the portafilter, which means no more trying to balance your portafilter on a kitchen scale. Situation 2 is when you want to change to a different style of coffee. Again, because this grinder retains almost no grinds, you will require very little or no purging before grinding the new coffee, again saving you time and money. Finally, and this is the biggest one for me, not having to purge grinds every single time means that a single dosing grinder makes dialing in a new coffee drastically quicker than on its higher retention counterparts. Simply taste the shot, make an adjustment, and then immediately grind and taste the next shot. For all of these reasons, Single dosing to me has always been a no-brainer for home use, only with one critical drawback. Single dosing grinders are expensive. You can use the link in the description below to check your local pricing for the niche, but compared to even the least expensive Chiado single dose grinder, the niche has them beat on price by a long shot. So, we've determined that this grinder looks great and has some seriously low retention, but how does the coffee actually taste? The answer is that it tastes like a high-end conical burr grinder should taste. The grinds come out of the grinder very fluffy with minimal clumping, and the perfect size dosing cup really is a pleasure to use. The flavor is full, with the fruity and acidic notes from the coffee slightly more pronounced than you might be used to from a grinder that has a flat burr set. Grind size consistency is very good, and a reduction in the amount of fines at the bottom of my cup was immediately noticeable compared to something lower end like the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. The grinds produced by these two grinders do honestly look like they're from completely different beans, but they're not. And the way that the shots extract from these two grinders is also night and day. Wait a minute, did this guy just compare a high-end, single-dose grinder to a Breville? Well, yes, I did, and initially it was because the Breville was the only other conical burr set I currently had in my home. But then I remembered, the price gap between these two grinders isn't really that big. They both take a one-grinder-for-everything approach by having a very wide coarseness range, they both have a modern look, and they both cost well under $1,000. Okay, okay, I'll stop, because I've probably already gotten myself in enough trouble by even mentioning these two grinders in the same breath. But you will see the niche go head to head with a variety of grinders in my future videos, and depending on how willing I am to tempt the YouTube coffee gods, this Breville might even be one of them. The Niche Zero has undoubtedly taken the single dose grinder market by storm and I'd be very surprised if some of the big names don't come out with lower-priced single-dose options 
particularly built to challenge the Zero. But for now, I can say that in terms of looks, performance, and value, the Niche Zero is operating in a league of its own, and the creators should be very proud of the cult following they've already built around this grinder. As always, I'll leave a link to where you can buy this grinder in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and also be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the upcoming head-to-head -head comparisons I'll be doing involving this grinder. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.